Hi, everyone. I'm excited to welcome you to our week one, part two of the course. In part one, we spoke about the differentiated instruction. Now, we will focus on flexible classroom environment to ensure that no learner is left behind. School and classroom designs should facilitate modern learners' methods that prepare students for college, careers, and citizenship in the 21st century. Students are expected to show what they know through problem solving and in-depth demonstration of subject matter. It is essential to provide flexible learning environments that support diverse teaching and learning needs. To optimize 21st century teaching methods such as project-based learning and personalized instruction, space should be adapted to allow multiple learning activities to occur simultaneously. A flexible classroom is fundamental to an instructor's ability to adapt to various needs. The designs must allow for a variety of learning environments and grouping formats that consider all learning style profiles. Learner-centered classrooms should be designed to accommodate different teaching and learning formats, including individual study and reflection, one-on-one -on -one instruction, peer-to-peer -peer discussion, small group work, teacher-directed instruction, and student presentation. Flexible learning environment presupposes flexibility in space, grouping, and time, three essential elements. Let's dwell more on each of them. And first, we will discuss flexibility in space. Collaborative learning spaces call for flexible furniture to allow versatility and modifiability. Classroom designed to support active learning increase student engagement on multiple measures as compared to traditional row by column classroom seating. Implementing flexibility in smaller spaces may seem challenging, but with the right furniture configurations, a smaller classroom has room for flexibility when row by column classroom seating is modified. Children have a developmental need for movement and flexible school furniture allows students to shift position, rock, rotate, and roll. Chairs and tables with wheels and adjustable standing desks offer students the choice of sitting and standing during the school day and provide alternatives for various activities, learning styles, and their special needs. Easy access to materials and wireless technology are integral to creative, inquiry-based learning. Movable storage cabinets and mobile cards allow versatility and the convertibility in science labs shared commons and other learning areas. On the side, you can see some popular variations with chairs and tables that can allow conducting debates, group work, to name a few, and diverse your classes. In learning environments that are designed for flexibility, students may be observed learning while lying down on the carpet or sitting at low tables on soft seating or in beanbag chairs. Students may work alone or within a group. Shared learning spaces foster a sense of community as students work in teams for STEM, career technical education, and other subjects. Of course, everything is conducted in English. Flexible learning spaces are attainable for existing school facilities, as well as modernization and new construction projects. Today, students require environments that encourage discovery and deeper learning, and flexible design is fundamental to the next generation of teaching and learning. Flexible time. There is much more to a flexible learning environment than the physical space. The flexibility extends to the use of time. What do we mean by this? For example, you might revise the schedule, shortening classes to create a block of time for a guest speaker or home-based activity. Students with guidance from their teachers identify what learning they want support in and sign up for specific workshops to reinforce those skills during this block. Sometimes this might be remediation of a concept taught early in the day. Other times it will be an extension activity for students who have already grasped the concept from early in the day and at times, these blocks of time are also used to make explicit connections between the disciplines. Students may use this time to work on units, accumulating projects that bring learning from multiple subjects together. These flexible blocks help students personalize their learning path, make connections across disciplines, and give them voice and choice in their learning. 
The last concept is flexible student grouping. Traditionally, students are grouped together for a specific class at a specific time at the beginning of the year, and that grouping doesn't change. However, this presumes that all students are the same and need the exact same learning opportunities at the exact same time. But we know that all students are unique, and so this model has its limitations. The research affirms this as well. Using data to frequently adapt student grouping strategies to student needs is a key aspect of personalization. It is yet another way that instructors can be responsive to student needs and allow students to take various paths through content." End of quote. Regardless of whatever your child will be a renovated space or not, teachers have to try to find ways to focus on flexible student grouping. The grouping can be random, student choice, continents or colors, with a little prior preparation, and the link for such activities you can find in our reference block to this module, or digitally using various apps. And I will also leave a link for six ways to group students online in our reference block. Interest and achievements. Does a flexible learning environment improve learning? When teachers are working more collaboratively, they see connections across the skills and content from their specific courses. Survey data shows that students working in the flexible space felt that their teachers knew what was going on in own classes, and the students were more likely to make connections between subjects than those not in flexible learning environments. Interdisciplinary planning and conversations allow teachers to develop common language for skills that transcend subject areas. For example, writing a claim, supporting it with evidence, and using reasoning occurs in almost all subject areas, though not always in the exact same format. In a flexible learning environment, teachers more easily calibrate their language and students make overt connections between subject area content and skills. While this may not show up explicitly in the standardized test result, students build their ability to see the world as interconnected, which we know it is. Additionally, using flexible grouping and time allows students to be pushed further in their areas of strength and to get additional time and support in areas of challenge. A study by the Rand Corporation indicates that compared to their peers, students in schools using personalized learning practices are making greater progress over the course of two school years, and that students who started out behind are not catching up to perform it or above national averages. End of quote. Therefore, I want to leave you with one of my fave quotes by Alexander Den Heyer that inspires me a lot. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. That's all from me now. In the reading part of this module, you can learn more about the concept and I hope the knowledge obtained will be applied in your classrooms. In the next module, you will discuss the concept of social emotional learning for English learners. Ludmila, it's over to you. And until the next time, everybody.